This tutorial will address the muscles attaching into the foot. Primarily we'll discuss intrinsics and several extrinsics attaching into the foot. So let's begin by observing that there are very few muscle attachments on the dorsum of the foot and many attachment sites on the plantar aspect of the foot. So on the dorsum of the foot there are only two intrinsic muscles both of which attach to this area of the calcaneus. So if we examine the foot from this view, this being lateral, this being medial, this is the anterolateral portion of the calcaneus, which gives rise to the intrinsic muscle going here and to another muscle going here, here, and here. So going to the to the fifth, excuse me, going to the first digit is extensor hallucis brevis. Also rising from the same area on the calcaneus is extensor digitorum brevis, only going to digits two, three, and four out here as a part of the dorsal digital expansion. Let's move to the more interesting plantar surface of the foot. Okay. Generally speaking, there are four layers of plantar muscles in the foot. The most uh, superficial layer is the most plantar layer. It's the first layer and has three muscles. Those muscles are the longest of the intrinsic muscles of the foot, meaning that they attach proximally way back here on the rear foot. And as we move down in layers, the proximal attachments move more distal in the foot. So here, attaching to this landmark on the calcaneus, here is the calcaneal tuberosity. Okay, Calcaneal tuberosity are the three muscles all along here, which are in the first layer. The first layer has two abductors and a flexor. So there's an abductor out here to the fifth digit, an abductor to the first digit, and flexors going down the middle. So we have in the first layer abductor halysis, in the first layer laterally abductor digiti minimi, and in the center flexor digitorum brevis. So let's look more closely at the abductor halysis muscle arising from here, the calcaneal tuberosity, and attaching here to the base of the proximal phalanx along its medial side. So it's somewhat unusual in that it is an abductor but attaching medially. But recall that the motion of the toes is named according to this digit, the second digit. Whereas the abductor for the little toe arises from this same calcaneal tuberosity, but attaches into the lateral aspect of the proximal phalanx base of the fifth digit. The flexor digitorum brevis, the third muscle and the intermediate muscle, if you will, arising from this calcaneal tuberosity, goes out to the lesser four digits, specifically, as one example shows, here and here. So that's the flexor digitorum brevis, not going to the proximal phalanx, not going to the distal phalanx, or it would be called a longus, but the brevis going to the intermediate phalanx on the sides of the intermediate phalanx of the base. So sides of the base of the intermediate or middle phalanx is the flexor digitorum brevis. So those are the muscles in the first layer of intrinsics of the foot. The second layer, intrinsic muscles of the foot, the key feature of the second layer to recall are that these muscles are related to the tendons, specifically to the tendon of flexor digitorum longus. So the flexor digitorum longus, because it's in the second layer, doesn't attach all the way posteriorly as the first layer, but attaches just a little more anteriorly to these two portions of the calcaneus, which are just distal to this calcaneal tuberosity. Okay. The quadratus plantae muscle attaches into a tendon, which is coursing in this direction, flexor digitorum longus. 
quadratus plantae comes up this way, attaches into that tendon, flexor digitorum longus. The other muscle in this second layer are the lumbricals. Lumbricals arising from this long tendon, flexor digitorum longus, coming from the deep posterior leg. And the lumbricals go to digits 2, 3, 4, and 5, attaching along their medial aspects into the dorsal digital expansion. The third layer of intrinsic muscles generally arise from the midfoot and the metatarsals. So again, moving more distally as we move deeper into the foot. There are three muscles in this third layer as well. Three muscles in the first layer, three muscles in the third layer. In the first layer, we had abductors. In this third layer, we have an adductor. An adductor with a transverse head and an oblique head. We have an adductor and we have two flexors. So we have the flexor digiti minimi and the flexor hallucis brevis. Okay, so again, first layer, two abductors and the short flexor to the lesser four digits. Third layer, we had the adductor hallucis, flexor hallucis brevis, flexor digitorum brevis. So let's look more closely at the attachment sites for the adductor halysis. So the adductor halysis attaches to these three landmarks, its transverse head, so transverse head of the third, fourth, and fifth metatarsals along the plantar aspect, whereas the proximal attachment of the oblique head is to the bases of the second, third, and fourth metatarsals. So that's nicely arranged because the adductor, ADD, has three attachments to the transverse head, three attachments for the oblique head. The attachments for the transverse head are to the heads. The attachments for the oblique head are to the bases. Two, three, and four here, three, four, and five, so just offset by one. Okay, so those are the proximal attachments. The distal attachment will be to this side of the proximal phalanx, which means the lateral side of the base of the proximal phalanx. Hence, adducting that great toe towards the second toe. Right. The flexor digitorum brevis arises from this area on the plantar aspect of the fifth metatarsal and attaches up here to the base of the proximal phalanx on the lateral side. So it's unusual in that the flexor attaches also to the lateral side here. The flexor to the great toe, the flexor hallucis brevis, arises from these two bones here. So the flexor hallucis brevis attaches to the cuboid and the lateral cuneiform Here's the medial cuneiform, here's the intermediate cuneiform, here's the lateral cuneiform. So the flexor hallucis brevis attaches to the lateral cuneiform and the cuboid along their plantar surfaces, as well as a long tendon, which is coming down in this area. This long tendon is coming from the posterior leg, specifically the deep compartment of the posterior leg. It's the only muscle in that compartment that does not go out to the digits Hence, this is tibialis posterior. So the short flexor to the great toe, so the flexor hallucis brevis, arises from the tibialis posterior and the plantar aspect of the lateral cuneiform and the cuboid bone. Right, so that gives us the flexor here, flexor here, adductor. The fourth layer of muscles in the intrinsic, in the intrinsic of the foot are the inner osseae. Inner osseae be meaning between bones. So the inner osseae arise from the metatarsal shafts and attach into the dorsal digital expansions. You can recall the functions of the dorsal inner osseae as DAB, D-A-B, so the dorsal A-B duct and the plantar A-D-D, 
D-duct, A-D-D, pad, dab, and pad. So we don't need an abductor to the first digit because it has its own abductor in the first layer. We don't need a dorsal interosseous or another abductor to the fifth digit because it has its own abductor also in the first layer. We do need an abductor to the second digit to abduct that direction and abduct that direction because if you recall motion of these of this joint the MTP joint in this transverse plane in this case medially is called medial abduction and this is called lateral abduction so we actually need two dorsal interossei to this digit we need a, a dorsal interosseus to this digit and a dorsal interosseus to this digit because they don't have their separate abductor muscles so we've got four dorsal interosseus Let's move to the palmar interosseus. The palmar interosseus for pad, they adduct. So we don't need an a, another adductor to the first digit because it has its own oblique and transverse heads. We don't need an a, another adductor or any adductor to the second digit because it doesn't adduct. It abducts laterally and medially. So that leaves us needing an adductor to the third, fourth, and fifth digits. Those are the intrinsic muscles of the foot. Now to pick up a couple of extrinsic muscles which attach into the foot. Observe the medial side of the foot along these two landmarks here. So to the more plantar part of the medial aspect of the medial cuneiform and the medial side of the base of the first metatarsal, a tendon coming down this way is the tibialis anterior to those same two bones, but to the lateral aspect of the medial cuneiform and the base of the first metatarsal attaches the peroneus longus. Comes down here, curves across the cuboid, travels across the plantar aspect of the foot over to those two laterally located landmarks. Medial side of the foot, but lateral surfaces. Another tendon to point out that comes down is a tendon here attaching to the tuberosity on the base of the fifth, and that is fibularis brevis. Fibularis tertius generally attaches in this area.